Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Tech TLDR. And today's SpaceX news update, just the space update, we have a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about the Starship SN10 launch dates coming up. We're going to talk about Rocket Lab, that company, the recent announcement it made. We're also going to be talking about a space robotics startup that I really want to get into. So if you want to know everything, stick to the episode. Be sure to drop a like on the video if you want to stay connected with these kinds of videos and to help me out. But let's get into why you clicked on the video. So Mary Bogatigaga on Twitter had tweeted that she had been notified to evacuate the area because of Starship SN10 testing. Anytime locals are told to evacuate the area when it's beyond just a road closer around there, that means that there is going to be an actual flight of these Starships. They don't need any locals getting blown up. However, that ended up changing. So she ended up getting notified that the cancellation was off, that we're not needed to evacuate. And now the next flight date is actually pushed until this coming Wednesday for the SN10. March 3rd is when we'll see the Starship go into the sky. I'm confident in this because SpaceX, they have the clearance with the FAA. They did the engine swaps, the Raptor engines on the SN10. So they did two static fires. The second one went successful. The first one didn't, obviously, because they had to do the swap. But now everything is set to go. The problem and the delay has only had to do with weather. It's not the conditions that they need in order to do a test like this so it makes sense that they had to postpone it i saw someone tweeting that it was going to be happening tomorrow tuesday this is not true if you look on the camera county website the latest closure is this coming wednesday so don't fall into anything about some sort of flight happening besides that wednesday the very earliest i'm confident that it will happen based on the weather that i've seen it looks like it's going to be the optimal time to do so unless the weather changes but speaking of weather, that is currently SpaceX's biggest problem. They were going to do more Starlink uh, launch yesterday. They had to abort that, that Falcon 9 launch, again, because of inclement weather. I started to tune in the live stream to watch the actual thing itself. SpaceX was streaming it, and it just never happened. They had to abort. I'm glad I didn't watch the entire live stream because I would have been just waiting for nothing. And again, this launch, it was for more Starlink satellites to go into orbit. This weekend, I actually saw some family and I was explaining to them what Starlink was. You know, we were talking about space and technology and things like that. And they're really behind in terms of like what's really going on in that industry. And I was explaining to them what Starlink was and like how revolutionary it really could be that you could just pop a box wherever, wherever you go in the world and you can have high speed internet. And they just like, they thought it was the dumbest thing. They're like, well, my cell phone has high speed internet. I'm like, yeah, but you're kind of tethered to a physical pole, right? Like you have to be near a tower for the most part. I mean, a lot of providers, they don't have that same kind of coverage. It's not the same where you have the little mobile satellite dish that you can bring wherever with you and have high speed data internet. I can't tether my phone to my computer and start playing Warzone. You know what I mean? Like it, that just, it does not happen like that. And they... They did not understand that concept. So we got a little bit of time until, you know, grandmas and grandpas can catch up to what's going on. <laughs> However, that's just my rant for that. Next big announcement. So this is Rocket Lab. If you don't know about Rocket Lab, they're a small rocket company based in New Zealand, and they focus primarily on their electron rocket, which puts very small payloads into orbit. Think of small companies, you know, not like a Starlink mission where there's 60 satellites, missions where there's like one or two little satellites, very small projects. They're going public on the NASDAQ. They're going to be a publicly traded stock coming up soon. So if you're an investor, if you have the extra money laying around and it's something that interests you, I highly recommend looking into their business, looking into what they do and their future projections, things like that. I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm not going to tell you what you should do in terms of investing or not, but I'd recommend just looking into it. And so as they unveiled that, they also talked about at the perfect time, their new mid uh, mid tier payload rocket that they want to start using and developing so as i just said their electron rocket is for small payloads this is going to be for medium sized payloads so this could be you know again enticing people to invest in their company whatever either way i think it's actually a really cool plan so this neutron rocket let's talk about this besides the electron so the electron again it's for very small payloads the neutron is going to be right between what an electron can do and what the falcon 9 can do the neutron is going to be rated to do about 8,000 kilograms of weight in the low Earth orbit. And to give reference, the Falcon 9 can do about 23,000 kilograms in the low Earth orbit. Also, they stated that this rocket can lift about 98% of all of the satellite that are forecast to be lifted until 2029. It's going to be competitive for SpaceX. Don't get me wrong, because it's going to be much cheaper, I would assume. I think that's okay. 
because I think SpaceX is more concerned about they have their own launches for Starlink and getting that into place. They also already have established contracts with NASA and things going forward like that in their Starship. So they're definitely not concerned that large, you know what I mean? It's really not that big of a deal. If I'm Blue Origin, I'm probably nervous because as of right now, I mean, they got nothing going on. But this is definitely going to be a game changer in the space industry. And it's not just for low Earth orbit. They're saying this rocket could also go to places like Venus and Mars. So this is a long distance vehicle. And it's also reusable, having a feature of the first stage being able to land on the ocean platform, just like the Falcon 9 boosters can. This will be affordable. This will be more practical for a lot of companies that have smaller payloads. And they're also going to be launching this from Virginia, the space down in there. I think over time, over the next probably five, 10 years, we're going to see a lot of these small to medium sized rocket company startups happening because there's a lot of demand going forward for this. Uh, another company I was going to talk about, I just didn't have the time in terms of one episode was this rocket company that is going to be 3D printing rockets and they want to get into the whole 3D printing space in space, like that whole industry. I'm curious what you guys have to say though about this rocket. Do you guys think it'll be a practical use rocket? Do you think the whole medium sized rockets are needed or do you think companies will just probably go with the falcon 9 instead for its proven success let me know in the comments now the last story i want to talk about which personally i find the most interesting so this space startup from japan they're called the gitai i don't know if i pronounced that right raised about 17 million dollars to help build a robotic workforce uh commercial space this is coming from techcrunch.com so this robot what can it do so right now, the robots that they're developing are made to go up into space and to actually upgrade and repair already existing satellites. I think that's a really cool in, um, market to get into because if you think about it, so many satellites become defunct or they just become irrelevant. The What they can handle is no longer useful. Technology progresses so fast. And when you put something in orbit like that, it's really difficult for it to keep up with the times. So this is going to, again, upgrade it. And so that way these satellites don't have to just come back either plumbing down to earth and burn up in orbit or become space junk. They can actually be usable for a much longer time. And this may also change the way satellites are built as a whole. Companies may have to change, you know, how they're engineered to make sure that, okay, if we can repair these, make it almost like Legos in a way, or like the same way how we build computers. Now, if you have a custom built computer, you know that you can swap a lot of the parts out as time progresses. You want the new CPU. You want that new NVIDIA graphics card that already got bought out, so you have to buy it from a scalper. You want that stuff. That way, you can swap it in your new computer. It's going to be the same thing with these satellites, in my opinion. I would not be surprised if they have to change up the dynamics of this. Once they get that established and they can make these robots to do that type of task, which is a needed, uh, which is you know a problem that has to be solved, they then want to take robots to the next level by making them as a workforce for establishing colonies on Mars and the moon and beyond. I think that's one of the biggest markets once space becomes a thing. You know, once we really establish ourselves on another planet, robotics is going to absolutely explode. Right now in our day-to-day -day lives, they do and don't exist. You know, there's like the Roomba, you know, that's a robot. I mean self-driving cars are becoming more and more of a thing stuff like that it's not really intrusive in our daily -day lives that much automated stuff here and there whatever but if we go into outer space there's a lot of dangerous areas everything is a dangerous area it's not practical for humans to do a lot of this stuff so they're going to need robots to do the dangerous things that we cannot do they're also going to be needed to do the grunt work. So scientists up there can focus more on the research and studies. They don't have to be concerned about manual labor type tasks. Another big industry that would be they're really going to be needed in is space mining. That's going to be incredibly dangerous. I mean, you think of mining as it is. It is not an easy job. It is not easy on the body. It, a lot of things can go wrong. Now you're in outer space. A lot, nothing can go right really if you think about it it's more likely that something will go wrong than right put a robot on there to do what you need to do space mining is going to be pivotal if we're going to establish any sort of base beyond earth there's only so many resources we have here we have to utilize the giant floating rocks of just juicy minerals for what they have unfortunately and these robots are going to need to be the ones that do it like this guy right here look at him this guy's gonna he's the next coal miner you know what i mean this is your great granddad coal miner this is him we need this guy 
And these are the type of companies that I really want to talk about on this channel because this is the stuff that personally excites me. So if you want more of those types of things, be sure to let me know in the comments and subscribe to the channel because it is something I will be talking about. But either way, that's all I have for you guys in this episode. I know drop a comment, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. You know the drill. Either way, have a good one, guys.